Hello, everyone. Let's give another one minute before we start off. And thank you so much for coming to this webinar. We're going to talk about fears, doubts, and the uncertainty about data privacy compliance. My name is Mukund. I head the marketing uh, for the privacy services. And uh, one thing we will promise, we will promise to keep this session very interactive. We will promise to keep it really practical and we will promise to leave no questions unanswered, whether we will answer it immediately or probably get on a call with you later on. But the promise is to not leave a single question unanswered. So let's give a minute. We have a very exciting session and we will start off. All right, so one minute has passed. Again, uh, quickly, we had a lot of questions and fears and doubts about data privacy compliance across most of our uh, clients. And then we said, let's have a very quick practical session on data privacy compliance across GCC. And now, this is a part, Rahul, if you can just say in the slide, this is the part of what we are doing as the Cybersecurity Olympics, which has nine different topics of, of cybersecurity, starting from AI, privacy, cloud, and compliance. So these webinars are going to be split over the next 15 days, and you will get notifications. Just hit the uh, message button. Okay, let's move on to the next slide now. We have two privacy experts, Smriti and Rahul. Uh, Smriti is an accredited FIP professional and she is the most preferred uh, professional for many of our clients across BFSI, oil and gas, and governmental agencies across Saudi Arabia, UAE, Qatar, and Bahrain. She's done many live implementations. Uh, Rahul has implemented a lot of uh, the privacy uh, standards across uh, the Middle East and his advisory services are allowed by many of our customers. So they will take through uh, this session, uh, keep it interactive, ask as many questions as you want to, and we will leave no question unanswered. Over to you, Smriti and Rahul, take it up. All right. So good afternoon, everyone. And uh, first of all, I would like to thank all the professionals who have joined us from the region. And we really hope that the session today is insightful. Please feel free to ask any questions and we'll be more than happy to address your queries. I'm Smriti Pradhan. I'm the lead consultant for data privacy in the organization. And as part of today's agenda, our focus is to ensure that we are able to provide you with the practical tips of how you can implement data privacy programs within your organization and ensure what are some of the effective strategies that needs to be considered before you start building the program, right? Uh, at the same time, we would be also focusing on some of the key trends that we are witnessing in the region and globally. Uh, we would also take some real life examples of how we have supported our customers in building privacy implementation programs and help uh, them ensure compliance with the in-local regulatory laws. So let's get started and uh, we can move on to the next slide, Rahul. So today, as executives, we need to understand that we have to be really informed with the changing regulatory landscape. And today, we see that GCC in itself is on an upward trend for all the privacy laws. The hot topic for the region today is the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia's personal data protection law which is going to be enforced from 14th of September next week. And uh, to, be, uh, to, be, to be clear on this part, that the law was effective from 2023 and organizations were given a compliance grace period for one year. And that is where it is important for every private and public organizations today to ensure that they do have the necessary readiness required for Saudi PDPL. Coming to other regions like Oman and Kuwait, they do have their effective privacy laws already implemented since last year. And that is where it is very important for organizations to ensure that the data privacy obligations against these regulations, if they're falling into the same legal landscape, is taken into consideration before they build their privacy programs. We have noticed uh, when it comes to Qatar, there is a, a very interesting observation which we have made because when it comes to GCC, 
Qatar was one of the first countries which introduced the privacy law back in 2016. So today, if somebody asks me that, is a law effective in Qatar? Yes, the law is effective. But in the past two years, we have seen the Data Protection Authority of Qatar, which is NDPO, has been really effective in enforcing the law requirements on the organizations. And this is where the organizations are actively being audited by the regulatory authority to ensure that they're complying with the data privacy requirements. And finally, when it comes to the United Arab Emirates, the law is effective since 2021. Uh, the enforcement of the law is not yet out because uh, everybody is waiting for the executive regulations which are imminent and are yet to be released. So overall, what we see and what we observe, we would recommend that as business leaders today, it is very important for us to understand the legal landscape in which we are operating in with respect to data privacy laws and ensure compliance with the data protection requirements. So with this, we also would like to focus on why privacy is important for the organizations and over to you, Rahul. So why is privacy in so much buzz? What's the reason why privacy in the current focus? So like in the previous slide, you guys see that there are five regulations in the GCC now, but it's not just about the Middle East market, the entire globe. More than 135 countries have their dedicated data privacy regulation in the globe running right now. So why is it that the privacy in so much focus? According to a IAPP KPMG report, it was found that 93% of the organizations, they have ranked data privacy risk amongst the top 10 risks that they foresee for their business. Also among these 93% of the organization, 36% of the organization says that these are among the top five top five priority risks that they foresee. Now, why is that? So the reason is, again, the regulatory landscape. The regulations are being strict. They are asking the organization to fulfill the requirements. Not only just that, but it has also been a major requirement for the trust in the consumers. Now, it has been observed by the IAPP Consumer Trust Report that 60% of the people they make direct action in case they feel their privacy is at risk when they're using any kind of products, services, or whenever they are sharing any kind of data. So this, this becomes a huge differentiator for a business where it comes to the data privacy and how the organizations are keeping the personal data protected as well as secure. Also, it is seen that 70% of the consumers that are there online, they are very much concerned about their online privacy. So uh, a simple significant impact for this could be seen from brands like Apple, wherever where they are advertising their products, where they are using the tagline that Apple is privacy, wherein they are promoting privacy within their products. So this, this shows how a trend is shifting towards the data privacy to not just as a compliance barrier, but also as an enabler for the businesses. Now, what are the key emerging trends that we are yet to watch? And we are seeing many of these trends going within the market. So one of them is AI and automation. Now, AI and automation have drastically changed how privacy operations are being managed within the organization. We have various multiple developed tools within the market who run on AI and large language models. We have automated the operations for data privacy ad hoc tasks as well as various multiple activities such as doing personal data discoveries or doing data mapping, creating automatic data flow diagrams, uh, containing the data breach and things like that, which have made a significant change how organizations manage their data privacy operations. Now, another key trend that we see within the data privacy market is around the regulatory fluidity. Now, what is happening is that every other week, we see some kind of guidelines from regulators like Sadaya. In previous month, we see uh, different AI acts. E European Union launched its EUA EU AI Act, which is again tells that the regulations are being strict around it and the fluidity is increasing, in which we see there are many changes that are coming in the data privacy market, which organization need to keep an eye upon that what are the changes and how adaptable an organization can be in order to 
make these changes accom accomplished within our organization. And uh, another important trend that we are seeing is that 74% of consumers, they are more likely to trust the brand that prioritize privacy safe use of personal information. Let's just take a simple example of you and me. Let's say Smriti and I, we both are offering a same service to you. The only differentiator is I say that I will value your data privacy, but Smriti, nothing mentions about data privacy controls or anything. Everything is same, but the only difference is I value your privacy and other person don't. So what will you choose? Just take that example and see how businesses are changing, how they are valuing the privacy of the consumer to make it as key business differentiator when it comes to the data privacy implementation. That's correct. And just to add on to Rahul's point, uh, it's a very interesting observation which we which we have seen recently that all these laws, they have successfully done one thing. They have completely uh, shifted the power from the organizations to their data subjects. They have granted certain rights to their data subjects under the law, whether data subject can go to an organization and talk about accessing his personal data, get to know information about his personal data that is being managed by the, uh, by the organization. So one critical observation in this phase has been that a lot of data subjects today, they are accessing their rights, which in itself obligates organization that yes, they need to build a program that is sustainable and at the same time, acknowledge the rights that have been given to the data subjects. Now, uh, today I'll talk about that a lot of organizations, specifically when we talk about conglomerates, holding companies, organizations which have multiple entities, there is a, there is a major operational challenge when it comes to defining their governance structure or how the target operating model should look like. So today we have seen that when it comes to conglomerates, when it comes to holding companies, they find this challenging to understand how they would go about their privacy program, right? So before executing any privacy program, it is always recommended for the organizations to understand their legal landscape. So there are many variables which you will have to consider before you start executing a privacy program. One, if you are an organization which has got 15 or 16 entities operating across multiple regions, understand your customer base very well. It is very important to understand today the services that are being provided by your organization are corresponding to the customers of which country because like Rahul mentioned in the previous slide, approximately 60 to 65 countries today have their own privacy law. So understanding of the legal landscape understanding of the customer base is absolutely crucial before you deep dive into executing a privacy program. Also, it is very important that today if your organization has a very decentralized structure. So, so let's say today you are an organization which is operating globally. You have many entities and each of these entities is providing a very different kind of a business service. So maybe one of the entities is providing a technology service. One of the entities is into logistics. So it is very important you understand the business entity operations very well and then go forward with designing a target operating model where you can actually decide that whether you need a central data protection office to look after all the entities or are there any regulatory challenges related to the localization of the privacy officers and make these privacy officers available in each and every entity of yours. So there are certain models which talk about it, like the centralized model, the decentralized model, but this will completely depend upon first understanding your business operations, your customer base and the legal landscape. And then you go forward with building such kind of a target operating model. Today, uh, when we execute programs for our customers, we also see that customers uh, without knowing their legal landscape, they directly take GDPR or any of the global privacy law as a reference and start building their program. So as, as an organization today, we generally uh, won't recommend uh, to go forward with such kind of an approach because when we talk about specific laws, yes, GDPR has been an inspiration for many of the laws today, uh, which are even uh, operational in GCC, right? But when you go and take GDPR as a reference without knowing whether it is being applicable to your organization or not, it is very important that uh, it is uh, okay. Uh, I'll okay. So it is very important for your uh, organization to understand that there are many operational challenges when you go forward with the program 
without understanding your legal requirement. So GDPR can be a reference, but once you start operationalizing it, then it would be a problem because you might realize that it may not be the law that is applicable to your organization. So understand your legal landscape, uh, understand your customer base, understand the business operations of the organization, and then go forward with a very centralized or a decentralized approach. Now, the second thing, let's talk about the technology adoption. So today we have also seen that a lot of organizations today think that once they adopt the right tool or technology, it is going to make them 100% compliant. So, uh, so here what we generally say is that technology is definitely an enabler, but before you adopt any technology solution, please ensure that you have the policies, procedures, and the framework in place. So today it's not just about data privacy, you take any domain, be it data privacy, data security, or any, any, you take any domain across the world, technology is always used as an enabler. It will complement your existing processes and make sure that you optimize your uplift your existing processes with the help of the tool adoption. So it is very important for organizations to understand that technology in itself cannot solve your entire compliance problem. It can be an enabler. It can bridge the gap between your existing program and the process in place. But as, as an organization, you have to be very clear how the adoption of that technology is going to ensure uh, and help you, you know, in meeting your KPIs for the whole program. So these are some of the prerequisites that has to be taken into consideration. And let's talk about uh, the strategies for effective implementation during the course of the privacy program uh, implementation. Over to you, Rahul. Now, when it comes to strategies for effective implementation, so strategies are those wherein, uh, like when we talk about data privacy implementation project, so the embed, so the privacy should be embedded into the corporate governance of an organization wherein privacy should be considered as a board level priority to manage all the kind of data privacy risk. As in our previous discussion, we identified that organization considered data privacy to be among the top 10 risk, right? So based on that observation, it is also recommended to give the DPO a seat at a board level meeting where the decisions that are related to personal data processing, there comes a vote of the person who is aware about the data privacy regulation, what could be the challenges and whatnot, because the decisions have to come from upwards and it flows throughout the organization to carry a culture of data privacy. We also need to adopt a holistic view of data governance, wherein we have to integrate privacy in our data governance for better and efficient decision making. There shall be dedicated roles and responsibilities for people within the organization so that they know what are the activities, what are the risks that are related to data privacy operations, and what are the things or the mitigation steps the organization need to take up. We, as a strategy, we also need to make sure we have to prepare for the future. Since privacy and the security laws, they are evolving day to day. We are seeing new regulations. We are seeing new implementation guidelines. So we need to make a data privacy program in such a way that it is adaptable. And all the future changes could be incorporated within our organization as per it is required by the law and what is best for the organization. So uh, how, how we need to achieve these strategies for effective implementation? What are the effective tips that we can follow or an organization can do in order to achieve the privacy goal that they have? So the very first thing that an organization can do is to set a clear accountability. We need to ensure the people who are responsible for managing the privacy across the organization. Uh, it has been often seen that uh, privacy has been juggling between different teams like legal, GRC, InfoSec, IT, and there is no clear accountability that is being determined that who will manage data privacy within the organization. So very first step is to manage who will be accountable to manage the entire data privacy operation. Then the organization, they need to start with a risk-based approach. Prioritize high-risk data management activities wherever privacy is involved. 
so you need to identify which are the high risk activities because at all it's slightly difficult for the organization to focus on each and every aspect of the data privacy instead when we go with a risk based approach we identify what are the high priorities high risk activities and then based on that we develop our comprehensive privacy framework now when it comes to a comprehensive privacy framework we need to identify the regulations that are applicable on us then we need to build a scalable and adaptable framework for all the activities for example like conducting privacy impact assessments having data privacy notices uh, making breach notifications handling data subject rights so all those things have to be managed as per a data privacy framework now the next most and most important thing is employee training and culture now imagine today you have done set up the accountability you have done the risk based approach you have your comprehensive privacy framework but people in your organization are not aware how to manage personal data and today somebody sends the entire database through whatsapp or any other social media platform outside the organization so everything that we did will kind of be a waste of activity so that's where uh, employee training and culture brings a huge strain to a data privacy program wherein the employees knows that what are the activities that they need to do then to streamline all the activities of privacy operations we have the option to go for a privacy operation tool which automate and streamline all the tasks that are there in the privacy operations like data mapping consent tracking responding to data subject access right request making out notifications doing cookie scans and these tools can help you automate your task up to 80 to 90% wherein the operations that you want to do they could be done in the stipulated timeline the way the Uh, supervisory authorities expect you to respond let's say for example you need to respond to a data subject rights request within 30 days now if it is an entirely manual process for a big organization sometime it might not be possible so these tool help you streamline your process and do the thing effectively then the last and the most important thing is when you monitor and adapt your privacy audit most of the organization they build their policies for once and forget they have a data privacy program but you need to regularly audit your privacy processes you need to align it how the regulation is changing how the landscape is changing and that's how with the help of these few practical tips you can start your privacy journey and make it to a well versed one Rahul, you have time for a question. There's a there's an interesting question. If you can go back to the previous slide, yes. Uh, they, uh, I mean, the question is, uh, in terms of the automation, can you just give me an example of uh, what? Uh, the question is, how much time will I will automation save if I have to do data mapping, consent tracking? What are your learnings from your cases? That's what it is the question. so uh, as i mentioned during while i was talking about the privacy operation tool we have seen that of 80 to 90% automation could be done with the help of these tools wherein these tools uh, let's take the example of consent tracking now taking consent individually from each of the portals that we have each of the website that we have it could be very challenging task but integrating all those portals with the privacy operation tool and then automating it it could help us manage all the consent at a single platform have the consent records have the dashboard ready uh, these things could also streamline the way we process our personal data within an organization and help us fulfill the requirements that comes from the data privacy regulations Okay, I think uh, Syed Sharik Hussain has a question. Go ahead, Sh Syed. Syed. All right. While we wait for Syed to answer the question, because his hand was raised up, there's another question that's come up. Uh, the question I think uh, refers to your previous slide on the uh, rules and regulation. Oh, you know, audible. Say it. Mukund, you are also on mute. No, I am. Go ahead, Syed. 
Sorry, I think you're not audible. Yeah, say it. It's okay. You can put the question on the chat. We'll take it up. Can you put the question on the chat? Okay, I think this this customer is from KSA. He asks, "What will happen if I miss the fourteenth September deadline? What are the consequences?" Okay, so that that's a common question among many of the organizations that are there in the KSA. Now, what will happen is something that shall come from Sadaya. But when it comes uh, from privacy expert, those who are seeing, so these regulations, these are evolving, right? So as an organization, what is the most important thing is to show the content that we are there to protect privacy of the people. Now, um, not all the organization in KSA will able to demonstrate 100% compliance for the KSA PDPL. But what matters is that when... A, regulator knocks your door, you are able to tell them that we are doing these activities. This is how we plan to, this is something we are doing today. This is something that we are going to do in next six months that shall convince the regulatory authority. But again, uh, the decision makers here, what they are going to do or not, that shall come from those bodies. We can just suggest some kind of practical tips that you can incorporate just to make sure you are compliant with that. Okay. Uh, I think uh, so I, just to oh, add on right. to Rahul's point, just to add on to Rahul's point. So, so if you say if you look at it, uh, the law was actually effective from last year. So that's where organizations were given that grace period of one year, right, to comply with the law requirements. So, uh, whenever we look at any regulator, even for regulators, their main objective is not to penalize, but to ensure that the organizations have the right compliance readiness. So, since we know that the law was already effective since last year, what is the current maturity we have in terms of compliance readiness, right? So, that is something organizations need to demonstrate. So, uh, and yes, again, like Rahul, as Rahul mentioned, uh, the way the audits will go on, we will we don't have uh, we don't have clarity on that because that is something that will be carried on by Sadaya. But for the focus for your organization should be uh, whether you have a framework right now in place to demonstrate that yes. Uh, you are ready to be privacy compliant in accordance with the Sadaya requirements. So that is something you need to take into consideration. Okay, the next question, I think Syed, uh, Syed managed to text this question. The question is, my account, my question is that accountability for data privacy applies equally on all personnel. How can we relate only the senior management to be accountable for privacy? Okay, so, so let me take this question. So when it comes to accountability, you are right, Sayed. The accountability will lie on all people because all persons, as in every every department today within the organization, have a certain role to play in data privacy program. But when it comes to the governance of the program, it is going to be the data privacy office. And uh, that is where, uh, when you talk about the accountability of the senior management, yes, senior management should be involved in the steerco of the data privacy program. And they need to ensure that the privacy strategy and the initiatives of your organization are defined and uh, are defined and communicated by the organization. So this is very important because today the direction of data privacy should come from the senior management. And in fact, even if you go towards any program, right? Today, if you want to buy in, uh, if you want to get a buy-in for your program, if you're building a data privacy program within your organization, the, the message should come from the top leadership. You should get the buy-in and get the program started. Great. Okay. Uh, Farzu, uh, Mr. Asad, Farzuk Asad has a question. Sorry if I got your name wrong. What in your experience has been the process? Do regulators provide companies a compliance certificate on the periodic basis? Basis, okay. So when it comes to data privacy laws, privacy laws do not work on certification. And But yes, you will be having external audits. And certifications are generally for standards. So there is a certain standard called 27701, which is an extension of the information security standard. So you may you may get certified on that particular privacy management standard. But when it comes to laws like the law which has been released by Sadaya or the laws which are effective in other regions, certification mechanism is not required or neither it is expected from the regulators. So you will be having an external audit, regulatory audit, and you just need to ensure that the company is compliant and whatever observations they will have during the audit they will share it with you okay. i hope that answers your question yeah 
does it answer can you uh, can you just uh, speak i think uh, both sayed as well as uh, mr asad is it okay have you been able to understand yeah uh, i'm expecting that you can hear me uh, thank you so much for answering the question yes the point is very noted and i can understand that the uh, it's it's a law rather than a uh, you know rather than a standard for which a compliance certificate would be issued but uh, in your experience do you have any idea if there is a periodic audit that that gets conducted like the statutory audit of our financial statement that gets audited each year and we have to submit it to the regulators so in a similar manner do you think we have to engage a third party to get ourselves audited and then submit something to the regulators i'm sorry i think the voice is breaking mukul it was it was not very clear for me uh, i have the question i'll, I'll answer that okay. so okay. when it comes to statutory audits uh, there have been no clear guideline from sadaya or any other uh, since gdpr is also there from many previous years like it's almost about when they take suo moto and then they go to the uh, entities and then they check uh, if they are regulatory following the regulatory obligations or not till now they have not launched any kind of guidelines that they will do any annual audits or not but in case we have any updates we'll keep you posted through our linkedin page oh okay, okay. thank you so much uh, uh, sorry yeah i have hello Oh, I think we can't hear uh, Asad. But there's another question. The question is that uh, is there any overlap between NDMO and PDPA law in case it? Yes, yes. So, so NDMO again, it's a data management standard, not a very specific privacy standard, right? Unlike the Sadaya law, which is focusing only on personal data. The overlap of NDMO and privacy standard that has been set up by Sadaya lies in the domain fourteen of NDMO. So if you look at the domain 14 of NDMO, uh, that is the overlap which you will see with the law that has been released by the regulatory authority. And that particular domain of NDMO specifically talks about uh, the data privacy requirements, the policies and the framework that needs to be there in place and how you can ensure the rights of the citizens associated with your organization. Uh, let's have the poll questions now. Let's see how engaged our audience is just to record some answers and see how the organizations are doing. Can we pull up you the can, poll questions, please? You can also uh, type in your questions or ask or make comments if you had any, please. So the poll questions are live, guys. Please have a look and answer. So the first question is around understanding what is the biggest challenge when it comes to implementing data privacy law that you have faced in your experience. The second is about, have you identified all the data privacy regulations that are applicable to you? The third question is around, have you identified all your departments within the organization that own PII? And the last one is, how do you, uh, have you done any sort of data privacy assessments within your organizations till now? Okay. Uh while while people are asking uh, are filling the polls we'll give them a minute but there's a question from anmol sharma the question is how does the organization slash business department decide what is the correct data retention and the period of the data retention so to understand what is the correct data retention and the data retention period it largely depends upon the local regulations as well as the business need now these are the two major consideration when it comes to deciding retention period for a particular kind of data for example if we talk about taxation data some local regulation says the tax data should be stored for at least 15 years post that you can delete it 
So similar way, what is the business requirement? Those two have to be analyzed. And if let's say, for example, we have come to a conclusion that it is 15 years for how long we need to keep that data, we have to identify it and then record it and maintain it that this is how we, we, we are going to implement these things. Great. Anand, do you have any rejoinder to that? Anmol, sorry, you have any rejoinder to that? Okay. Uh, Anmol says thanks. Thanks, uh, Anmol Sharma, for the question. Okay, I think there's another question. This question is I understand the modest operandi pertaining to GDPR. From your answer, I get to know that the Middle East countries are not mandating this audit and it is more like a spot check performed by the regulators. Uh, that uh, understanding in itself, Asad, uh, is is uh, uh, we're not sure why uh, this understanding is coming up because if you look at Middle Eastern countries, right, specifically if I talk about countries like Qatar, which I also mentioned in the beginning of my slide, the authority is already very active in enforcing the law requirements. Similarly, Sadaya will become very active after 14th of September to enforce the requirements. So uh, it's not about mandating an audit. Uh, and of course, it is about a regulatory audit, right? So companies have to be prepared and th there is no spot check. It's, it's, it's more about you need to see that the regulators, whenever your company is coming under the scope of audit, you will be audited on each and every requirement and the non-compliances and the observations will be marked accordingly. So it's not about uh, mandating an audit or not conducting an audit. It's more about having that compliance readiness Whenever the external auditors come and uh, they have an audit of your environment, you have the right requirements in place, Asad. And when we talk about how effective they are in many countries, so Qatar for an example, right? NDPO is has actively enforced it and they are checking organizations from time to time. Similarly, Sadaya is expected to follow the same pattern once the law is enforced from 14th of September. So that depends where, uh, that, that also depends, right? That where the law is currently. So is the law only effective and not enforced? Because if you look at these two countries, the laws are already enforced, Asad. So that's where we have to be compliant ready. So I think Smithy, let's take our participants toward the case study and real life project insights that we have. Sure, sure. So you want to open up with the poll results? Uh, can we just check the poll results? We want to have uh, give some highlights. All right, Absolutely. sorry, continue. We'll get that. Uh, okay. So we have the poll, poll. results. And uh, I believe, Mukund, everybody is able to see the poll results, right? Even from the audience. No, yes. we'll read them out for you. Yeah. Go ahead. 31% uh, people uh, feel that the qualified professionals to take initiatives are missing, then uh, that's the highest. And in terms of identification of data privacy regulations, that will only 69% say yes, and the 31% say no. Uh, I think this largely remains a problem where people are 38% of them have not been able to identify all the departments that uh, own PII, right? Uh, and then we have 58% who say they, they know, uh, they have done some sort of privacy assessment and 42% say that they have not done it yet. Uh, Smriti, I think, let me just spin this off as a question. Uh, what, what are the dangers of uh, not identifying all the departments that own the PII. What is the consequence? And how does um, the board or the CEO look at this particular prospect? So so, so to address this question, Mukund, uh, we know that any law today which is, being, uh, which is being operational or which is being enforced, their focus is only on personal data. So that's where the identification of the PII from the departments become extremely crucial because you are in a way also ensuring that any exposure of the risk that might come from these departments are proactively identified and are mitigated. So that is one thing. And of course, once you identify the departments in scope, which are you know processing personal data or sensitive personal data, you can implement the framework requirements that are presented by the law. So it's, it's a very, very specific approach when you drive your data privacy programs you identify, you do a gap assessment, 
understand where the personal data lies within the organization and make the framework accordingly. So that is the impact, Mukun. The risk exposure is something which can be proactively identified and mitigated if you go with this kind of an exercise. Got it. Let's roll on with the rest. Okay. So talking about, uh, so so today our team has been involved in multiple project executions uh, across organizations. And this is an interesting slide where we are trying to bring some real life project insights, which we have seen how the organizations are maintaining their privacy. And probably after this slide, uh, you guys might want to reflect how the privacy operations are happening within your organizations as well, right? So there was one of our customers, which where, uh, where uh, we had an implemented technology to understand what are the kind of SDKs that are being tracked by their application. So SDKs are basically software development kits and at, at an application level, it processes a lot of personal data from the users who are basically using the application. So as part of, of our observation, we, we noticed that uh, the application that was hosted in Apple and the application that was hosted in Android, they both had very different SDKs identified. So when you when you look at an Apple iOS, the SDKs were that are actually collecting personal data were disabled by default compared to an Android Android application where the SDKs were enabled by default. So the learning from this particular project, what we saw is that how various product companies are taking privacy very seriously. So privacy is embedded in the core of their organization's product. And that is where we also recommend like product organizations should consider privacy in the software development lifecycle management. Similarly, a very common practice uh, during the hiring process, many organizations we have seen, uh, uh, they are being non-compliant along this requirement, is the permanent storage of the candidate data. So during hiring, there are a lot of prospective candidates who want to join your organization. And uh, as per our observation, we noticed that the data for the candidates who are not even converted into full-time employees, the data was stored permanently. Now, this is in complete violation of the privacy laws because privacy laws generally require the data to be stored as long as it is necessary by the organization. So for any candidate, if you are storing the data permanently without that candidate being an employee of your organization, it is very important to set the retention period and ensure that the data is protected. And the last thing, which is a very common observation, which we have seen in organization is related to the training content, which they are providing. So today data privacy requires organization to communicate to their employees, to make, uh, to create awareness amongst their employees, how they need to maintain and process personal data. And we have seen that in many organizations, personal data is shared through social media channels. And that is where it is very important for organizations to have training, to have training content focusing specifically on how the social media should be used within their organization so that there is no leak of customer data through any of these social media channels. Now, these are some of the interesting insights which we have seen in our project executions, but yes, uh, feel free to self-reflect and understand if in your organization, the case is same and uh, where you really need to focus on in terms of data privacy. With that, uh, we would really want to focus on few of the case studies which we have seen in organizations where we have worked and how technology implementation has supported them uh, in driving the whole privacy program. So I'm talking about one of the uh, uh, one of the uh, biggest telco in the kingdom of Saudi Arabia. And this company had a, uh, had a very, very monotonous process of, you know, having manual assessments uh, related to privacy impact assessments, related to establishment of the records that are expected from the law. And, and it's not just for this organization, specifically when we talk about conglomerates, when you go with a very manual process in operationalizing the assessments that are expected from the law, it becomes extremely cumbersome. The time taken is is large and at the same time, it becomes very, very resource in, in center, uh, intensive. In that case, it is recommended that you go forward with a technology solution. And even in our case, we supported this organization in implementing the right technology solution. And today the impact the tool had, the tool implementation had on this organization was the entire effort that was being taken to conduct these manual assessments, which was approximately taking seven to eight months have been reduced to three to four months. So you can see that there is a 50% decrease in the effort when you are operationalizing your privacy requirements. 
and uh, and that's where uh, it is very important for organizations to streamline their processes and go forward with the technology adoption. Similarly, when we talk about very regulated industries, for example, if there is a banking industry, so banks, hospitals, they're highly regulated. They have their own uh, regulatory laws which are applicable to them. We also faced another scenario, and this is one of our success stories, that uh, this particular bank, it, it, it had multiple entities across Middle East, and at the same time, it had a very complex organizational structure, right? With number of departments, divisions. So once it's so the 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 issue with the the challenge that the bank faced was the limited visibility of the personal data. So like I was mentioning, the first step for any organizations today is to identify the departments which are holding personal data. And this was the challenge faced by this organization because they had limited visibility. Now, with the help of the technology adoption, they were able to conduct a personal data discovery exercise in a very automated way. And this also helped them to identify the processes which are critical and undergo privacy impact assessments. So you can see that whenever you have a framework in place, how technology actually enables you to optimize your existing processes. So this is again a critical success story for us because uh, today we understand that when you consider industries like banks, retail conglomerates, hospitals, they carry a lot of personal data and sensitive personal data. And that is where the challenge is to first identify where the personal data is, use a technology solution that can support you in reducing those challenges. So what is the mantra that we are talking about, right? So the mantra what we are talking about right now is alleviate from privacy is a policy. So today, if you want to really build a privacy program, we really need to look at it in a way where it is not just a compliance exercise. It is not just a checklist exercise, but having privacy as a customer service mindset. So we have to alleviate the way we see foresee privacy and instead of just looking at it as a compliance exercise, businesses should be looking forward to it as a strategic advantage. And this is where today our organization is supporting multiple customers across GCC to build their data privacy program. So as an organization today, we don't believe in a plug-in and a plug-out approach where we come, we build some framework and then we move out. We have an extensive service portfolio for our customers where we not just support them in interpreting the law requirements by conducting a gap assessment, but also support them in advisory and consulting where we build the whole framework for them, the required policies and procedures, operationalize the assessments and make sure that they are in compliance with the law requirement. So from a technology perspective today, we are uh, partners with global privacy platforms and our team carries the exercise and the expertise uh, of implementing the configurations that are required from a tooling perspective. And uh, we completely underestimate the requirement of awareness within an organization. And I think one of our uh, attendees rightly spotted that every department has a certain role to play, even though the accountability is there with the data privacy team, Awareness and training sessions are absolutely important and that is where we support our customers in creating the role-based trainings and conducting the internal audits so that we ensure that there is a sustainable program in the as this stage. So, so today as an organization, we have success stories across Middle East. We have 24 plus clients uh, 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 success stories with us. We are, we are still uh, working for a lot of customers, building their programs. We have built a lot of programs for many of our customers. And this is where, uh, uh, as an organization today, we are focusing on an integrated approach. We provide end-to-end -end data privacy services. And the experts which we have today from our team are all IPP accredited professionals. Uh, I myself, I'm accredited and in fellow of information privacy and my team member Rahul, we are all IPP certified. So we bring in that expertise and that credibility when we are building programs for our customers. So with that, the summary is today, privacy has to be considered as one of your core business objectives. It has to be there in your business strategy and data protection by design should sit at the core of your business. And with that, as I close this presentation, 
uh, I would really request the participants to take the online privacy assessment test, which we have on our website. Mukund, you can actually post the website link so that attendees can att uh, provide their assessment results and they can gauge exactly where they stand in terms of their privacy journey. Oh, absolutely. Uh, Ruti, there is just one uh, one last question. Uh, we uh, it, say, it talks about the uh, assessment, right? Uh, typically, what is the time that is taken for an assessment, uh, privacy assessment to be completed is the question. Right. So privacy assessments will completely depend upon the volumetrics. So let's say today you have identified that there are uh, there are five departments having approximately 50 processes which are handling personal data. So privacy impact assessment, first of all, goes process-wise. So you need to conduct privacy impact assessments for 50 process. And that's where uh, the time will depend upon how quickly you perform those uh, assessments, right? So it completely depends upon the identification exercise. So, it, uh, so today, if, if there is a smaller organization, they might not identify a lot of departments handling personal data, right? So that will again depend. So this timeline is dependent upon the identification exercise, Mukund. Great. Uh, any more questions? Uh, we'll wait for a minute. And if there are none, we will thank everybody. We'll wait for a minute. I have, uh, I have uh, put the, I have put the questions. I mean, I put the assessment link uh, for all of you. Uh, please have a look at it. And I'm also putting a, if you are from Saudi Arabia, we have a assessment link for you as well. So please use that. Just give me a second. I'll just send. And if you are from Saudi Arabia, we have another special set, uh, assessment link for you. Please use that. If there are any questions from the attendees, please, please feel free to ask. All right, looks like uh, there are no more questions and uh, we will give back two minutes to all the participants. Thank you so much for your time uh, and having attended this. Hey, hold on for a second. Just a second. Oh yeah, sorry. That was uh, Anmol Sharma thanking us for the insightful session. Thanks, uh, Anmol. We're glad that you liked it. Okay, Sindhu, thanks uh, Rahul and Smriti for the session. Thank you, Sindhu. Sayed says thanks. Thanks, Sayed. Thank you all. Thank you so much for joining the session. Great. Let Thank us you. know. Uh, we will soon send you all our presentation and our contact details. So do get in touch with us or email us or take the privacy assessment question. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everyone.